All right, so today we're gonna continue talking about risk management, specifically about the five Ps. Since in the last video we talked in depth about PAVE, we will see the similarities and couple of differences between these two. And hopefully by the end of this video, I would have made the point that it doesn't really matter how you remember to be aware of the risk factors as long as you actually remember them. To add up to that, at the end of the video, we will see a couple of questions that can also help you to identify the risk factors in all the phases of your flight. And as always, this video is going to be divided in different sections, so here on the screen you will see the timestamps for each specific section, and also you can find the timestamps linked in the description of this video and also in the pinned comment down below. So that if you're in a hurry or you just want to know about one specific thing about this video, then please feel free to jump to the timestamps that you're interested in. But if you want to see the whole video, then I appreciate it quite a lot. Just to remember a bit, when we talk about risk management, we have four risk factors to take care of and something like PAVE can help us to remember those factors. To serve that same purpose, we also have the 5 P's checklist, which is another acronym that stands for Pilot, Passengers, Plane, Programming and Plan. As I said, it's very similar to what PAVE means and what it has to offer also. But I want to explain it anyway, so there is absolutely no doubt about it, and it does has one or two little differences. By the way, if you want to know what PAVE means and understand the general concept of risk management, I will leave over here the link of that video. The first P. Pilot. We need to make sure that we are not a source of risk for our own flight. How? Well, if we are sick or in any bad physical condition, if we don't have enough training on the particular airplane we are going to fly, assuming that we are not under training, if you don't have enough knowledge of what you are going to do, all of those things will make us a source of risk for the flight. Second P. Passengers. Here's where the five P's vary from PAVE, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this. You are not alone in the airplane. Your passengers can be your allies or your foes. They can be on your side and help you, or they can be a hazard to you. Maybe you have doctors, nurses, engineers, or maybe even another pilot and you didn't even knew about it. All of them can help if an emergency develops. But on the other side, maybe one of your passengers might be extremely drunk, or maybe under the influence of drugs, or maybe you have a real a really really old passenger that is under medical treatment and needs special attention. Just to throw some examples, if you have emergency doors in your airplane, make sure you have a strong, young and fit passenger next to it, so he or she can help the crew open the door. If you put a passenger that is old and weak over there, he or she probably won't be able to do the job and will always be an obstacle for other people to try to open the door. The next P is for plane. You have to know your limitations, performance and procedures, proper configurations and more about your airplane. Be sure that it is airworthy and which or if all the instruments and system of the airplane are working properly. The more stuff you are missing about the airplane that you are flying with, the more it becomes a hazard. After that we have programming. This one goes as a complement for the previous P, where you make sure to have your airplane in a proper condition and configuration for each specific part of your flight. The fifth and final P stands for plan, which basically covers the environment and external pressures from PAVE. This means that you have to be aware of the factors that might be important over there in the airport where you are trying to land, like present weather or closed runways. Also, you will have to look out for the airspace and the terrain where you're going to fly through. If you're going over mountainous terrain or water, 
what are you going to do if you have to perform an emergency landing over there? Think about the possible weather that you may encounter during your flight. At some point during your flight, not necessarily the whole flight. Can you and your airplane deal with that bad weather? This last P also considers the purpose of the flight and the primary reason why you need to make it and maintain its schedule. That means, can you wait for the next day if you see that today the weather is not that good? Or do you really have an urgency to complete that flight? What will be the outcome or the consequences for you if you don't do that flight right now? What happens if you wait a few hours to take off? Remember that urgencies can frequently end up in misfortunes. Also keep in mind that you should be using these PAVE and 5 piece resources before the flight begins, when you are planning the flight, and continue using it until the flight is done. To end up with risk management, let's remember the parts in which a flight is divided. We start with all what is before takeoff, then the climb and initial cruise, the end route cruise, descent, and the approach to the airport and landing. Each one of these portions of the flight have unique risks and hazards that we have to be aware of at the moment of executing the flight. You have to make multiple decisions throughout these five parts of the flight in order to keep it safe. In other words, you as a pilot have to make decisions throughout the whole flight. But in order to make those decisions good and effective decisions, at all moments you have to be aware of the situation you are in right now and be awaiting for what is to come next. Go on and ask yourself what has changed in this flight since the last time I asked myself this same question, or if anything has changed at all. Is everything going just as expected? If an unexpected change actually happened, does it put a considerable amount of risk into the operation, or can you go along with it just as a minor inconvenience? And no matter how big or small that change is, there is always the possibility that you can actually solve it or mitigate it. So think what can you do to control that risk. Wrapping up this video, this was just a quick side note to the previous video about risk management. Mostly because I feel that I could have elaborated a little bit more, at least about the 5 P's. So if you also want to elaborate a bit more about this whole theme, I recommend you to see that video. It would be linked in the description. So that's the end of the video. If you want to become an outstanding private pilot, if you are curious and you want to prepare yourself in the best possible way for all the tests to come, or even if you are an advanced pilot that wants to remember and perfect the basis of the BFR world, I highly recommend you should check out my book Essential Knowledge for Private Pilot. You will find the link of the book in the description of this video, it is an Amazon Kindle exclusive. This book uses the two most effective study techniques in the whole world, active recall and space repetition, and it applies them into aviation. So, if that sounds good to you, then please, go check out the book down below. It is available in English as well in Spanish. Remember that you shouldn't be studying hard, you should be studying effectively, and with this book you can do just that. And that's it, thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please consider giving it a like. If you learned something new, then please consider subscribing. And if you feel like it, you can also go follow me in Instagram, I upload very cool photos over there. Or at least they seem cool in my head. The link is also down below. If you have a question or an opinion about something I said during this video, then please feel free to comment down below, I would love to hear what you have to say. If you found this video interesting, then you should go check out the first part of risk management, I will leave the video right here, or the whole playlist of human factors that will be also here somewhere in the screen. Once again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another video, bye!